in the morning the word that came was arise this evening the word is shine very fast so that we can catch up with the time so that we can break certain yokes with the singles and married people and also break some yokes of anti-productivity but the subject is shine we want to understand what it means to shine and then understand what it takes to shine it is our year of greater glory and one of the departments of glory is shining. I know many ministries connected, related, associated with us here. You have declarations of the ministry where you oversee. But by being connected to this commission, the declarations of this commission affects you in addition to the one of the ministry where you are pastoring. So it's our year of greater glory and it means and a department of glory is shining. So it is our year of greater shining. That is, you have shined before but God is calling us to a higher dimension of shining. And it is in scripture in Matthew chapter 5 and in verse 14 and Matt all the way and then verse 16 he said you are the light of the world the city that is set on the hill cannot be hid let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven like we have the commandment to arise we also have the commandment to shine. Question is, what does it mean to shine? I am going to give five, six meanings of what it means to shine. When they say a student is shining in the class, it means he is outstanding. Number one, shine means be outstanding. It means stand out. As a pastor, as a minister, as a doctor, as a lawyer, as an architect, as a structural engineer, as a professional, as a housewife, as a mother, as a child, stand out, stand out. That is excel, be distinct, be distinguished, be outstanding. Don't exist to such a point where anybody claims ignorance of your existence. In your family, stand out. In your family, be outstanding. In your family, in your community, in your generation, let something be different about you. Let there be an unmistakable, unmistaken stamp, unmistaken stamp of uniqueness and peculiarity about you. 
In First Peter chapter chapter two and in verse nine, it is proved from Scripture that that is our destiny. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light when you step into an environment let there be something on you that looks different when you step into an office when you step into an aircraft when you step into a community let there be something that people may not be able to define but that stain that mark that stamp there. If you stand out, you have not done anything extra. You have only fulfilled your calling. If you are distinct, if you are peculiar, you haven't done anything extra. You have only fulfilled a calling. We have a calling. He say, arise. Then the second call is shine. I have you are a chosen generation, a peculiar people. I called you to shine, I called you to stand out, I called you to be different, I called you so that something can be unique about you. Is somebody there shout the loudest amen? amen. <laughs> my understanding of God and my understanding of the Bible makes this scripture to come alive for me everywhere everywhere around the world including where we don't know any mortal being lands all white they have never seen you before and they see you and suddenly there is something about you that cannot be explained I dropped at Abuja airport here some time ago and the airport taxi drivers and all of them, as, is, as their custom is, will rush at me. Say a word. Can you say a word of prayer? Can you do this? And as they gather around me, coincidentally that Sunday we are doing a special outreach for people who are in the transportation industry, drivers, um, airport people, uh, and so on. So I was trying to invite them for that service that day. And they surrounded me and I was about to pray for them. One of them said, excuse me, sir, but there is a problem here. There is a problem here. I said, what problem? He said, come. I followed him and he showed me a girl that was brought in from Lagos in an aircraft. I think she was carried on a stretcher. She was paralyzed. She suddenly fell sick, paralyzed. Can't walk, can't talk. Sat her there. She was crying. The woman sitting beside her was crying. And everything was like that. He said, that is the problem. I held the hand of the young girl. Applied fire to that devil. Commanded her to stand. She stood. I said, walk with me. She walked with me. She began to shed tears and cry. And she couldn't understand what just happened to her. I said, say after me, Jesus, Jesus. She began, she couldn't. While we were talking, the mother arrived. Beloved brothers and sisters, right at the airport. Everybody, including everybody of the other religion, was watching. Everybody say thank you, Jesus, including people of the other religion. Hey. Hey. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? That is evangelism on the streets, on the streets, on the streets. Beloved brothers, and that happened because there was something that pulled them and gathered them around without any effort. Beloved, I am here to announce to you, not just to announce, but to push you to that realm where you shine. Somebody shout, I am shining. Shout it louder. I am shining. Say it loudest. I am shining. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. It is an abomination to be ordinary. And if you permit me, 
it is almost a transgression to be normal. Whatsoever is born of flesh is flesh. Whatsoever is born of, of the spirit is spirit. And you are born of the spirit. So you are spirit. Some people say one of these days you will turn into a spirit. No, we are already spirit. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. Whatever is born of the spirit, spirit. I told you the funny story of my daughter. One day I was walking and I caught my hand. And it was bleeding. She opened her mouth. Eyes open. And she doesn't, that is she's, her own is one plus one is two. It's very, very prayerly. She opened her mouth. I say, what, are, what is happening? He said, you bleed too. <laughs> so you are like us. <laughs> I said, what? In this house? <laughs> Me and you are in this house. What have you been thinking? Don't say that again. <laughs> what would the outsiders say? <laughs> So you bleed too. You are like us. <laughs> this is not four years ago at the most. Four or five years ago. That is inside your own house. There is somebody looking at you as abnormal, unusual. I announce, I prophesy, I decree you are moving to that level of shining. Shout the loudest, amen. amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. What does it mean to shine? Number two, it means release potential. Release potential. Release content. Release what has been placed inside you. If you are a Joseph, dream dreams, interpret dreams. If you are a David, sing songs, write songs, dance the dance and fight the fight. Oh, because inside David there was dance. Inside him there was, inside him there was, uh, inside him there was sing. And inside him there was fight. Luke chapter 9 verse 21. The Bible says at the mountain of transfiguration. Jesus Christ. 29. And as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment was white and glistering. The word glistering is the word. Is, 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 is used where the light is coming from inside. When we say something is glittering or glistening, it means it is reflecting light outside. But glistering means it's, the light inside is coming out of it. That is Jesus was bringing out light that he carried from inside. And his raiment was shining because of what was inside him. If you are to shine, you, it, the meaning of that is you are to deploy your content. Deploy, deploy, deploy. You hold nothing back. You give out everything that is on the inside of you. That is arise. First of all, be outstanding. Secondly, release potential. Thirdly, be a light bearer. Shine means be a light bearer. A custodian, a custodian of light. A custodian of insight. Hmm. A well of revelation. Something is shining because either light is coming from inside it or it is reflecting light that lands on it. But by any means, whatever is shining is emitting light. 
either radiating light, reflecting light, or emitting light. There is light in shining. And when God says shine, it means never run out of insight. Never run out of revelation. Never run out of depth. Arise, shine. Bring out your light. Let that light confront your situations. Shine. The meaning is there is nobody who will lack light and be able to shine. It's not possible. Be a well. The Bible said concerning John the Baptist, John chapter 5, verse 35, he was a burning and a shining light. That's right. To have light is to shine. So be a custodian of light, a custodian of insight, a well of revelation, a well of illumination. Never arrive at the place of dryness as far as light is concerned. The reason why we have a lot of challenges in our generation is because we have a lot of people who are well dressed physically but are empty inside. Totally empty. Totally empty. Knack tie, knack suit, look fine. But on the inside, no trace of inside, no, no knockout revelation. Church is populated with people. They won't even revise what they studied in church. Abundance of documentation, bankruptcy of application. And there is no problem with right. I, if you see me, I'm a stenographer in church. But when I go back home, I take down action points. See me, I went for Shiloh, went for a minimum start conference. I will sit down on it. I will revise everything I went. Action one. There are some conventions I will have 25 actions to, 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 to employ. And I will follow it up through the year. Are you following what I'm saying here today? In fact, while the message is going on as I'm hearing things <coughs> I used to carry two or three different colors of pen the black one is for writing the red one or the blue one is for, for instruction I would just write while I write message, number action one revisit Smith Wigglesworth book Apostle of Faith I'll keep on going alright action two by the time the conference is over, I will go back to the note and pull out all the actions out of the sermon note into an action book. Oh. You heard something? So I don't lack what to run with through the year. Beloved brothers and sisters, means any moment M time T occasion O where the devil catches you he should be able to catch you with light behold I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means what you look at 10 verse 19 I sat on it one day then light came. What is this scripture saying? Pursue the devil. Break his head. Destroy his works. And proceed without consequence. Go after the devil. Break his head. Destroy his works. And proceed. I was sitting on scripture one day. He said, in gathering they shall gather, but not by me. As many as gather against you, they shall fall for your sake. What is this scripture saying? It doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter where they gathered. 
The question is, who gathered them? <laughs> if I didn't gather them, don't fear their gathering. So I walk out with such a light and proceed like the devil is a dead demon. So you talk with some level of audacity with a backing of light. Look at your neighbor say it from today. Drop the bucket and connect the well. Do you remember that man's testimony in the morning? Look at your neighbor say drop the bucket. Connect the well. Tell them the bucket you are carrying will never be enough to quench your own test. Not to talk of the thirst of the people. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Hmm. Be shine means be a light bearer. Number four, and I have to rush right now. Number four, shine means be a direction giver. Of course, light gives direction. You can't shine without light, and light gives direction. That is, people find their way through your light. It's like the star that led the wise men. Matthew chapter 2 verse 9. That star, star, when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. Till it came and stood over where the young child was. The burning bush gave direction to Moses. Exodus chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. He saw a bush burning. The bush was not consumed. And he turned aside to look. And then... God called to him. And the Bible said, he make it his minister as a flaming fire. As a child of God, you are a fire. And if you are a fire, you are, you are meant to be a fire that gives light to people and direction. Do you know the meaning of that? Somebody should be able to follow your steps and succeed in life. That's the meaning. Somebody should be able to follow your steps. Ay, 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 ay. And succeed in ministry somebody should be able to follow your example and his marriage worked I'm very sorry to say this but please let me say it. look at your back if nobody is taking steps after you you are wasting your life if nobody friend or enemy is taking steps after your steps your life is wasting if nobody is ever desiring to be like you that is a wastage of life I'm not talking of whether you have a job or not those are tiny issues but in terms of the person you are in terms of the character you exhibit in terms of the examples you display in terms of your mannerism take a look at your back is there anybody taking steps after your steps you will not waste your life by God's message I have countless people by God's message. Not even just in ministry now. Even in the secular organization, the secular world. I see okay, secular people. People in all. Say, we are learning from you. You are teaching us a lot of things. All to the glory of God. Please avoid the tragedy of a wasted life. To live for yourself is to live for the less. Am I communicating at all? If nobody is taking your steps, is taking your steps, following your steps, asking you questions, 
how do I live better? How do I have a more productive life? While I was in the university, a young man who recently gave his life to Christ at that time was always standing near me. Well, I, in those days, we used to pray for three days. That is, <laughs> who come, the only time you go out is maybe to go and drink water. And then I think, um, I can't remember now whether in the night, three days, no food, nothing. And I see this young man standing beside me. I said, what are you doing? He said, I am observing the way you are praying. I want to pray likewise. Light, shining, means direction giver. I want you to come to the point at this moment, young lady. When young ladies, without you inviting them, rally around your life. Where they can say, we have seen your life, seen your character, seen your integrity, seen your productivity. Can you show me how to live? Young man, where people, many are too arrogant for anybody to follow them. Too proud for anybody to follow them. Too closed. They won't tell anybody anything. You know, in this place, we tell you almost every, we tell you everything. Everything. This is what we do. This is our. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here today? Avoid the tragedy of a wasted life. Make up your mind and shine. My wife dresses like this, both because of her personal conviction and because she's too conscious of the fact that people are following. Oh yeah. Why? Because if she dares wear what they call mini. So no, it is only God does not. Uh, God doesn't look at the outward. He only looks at the inside. And you know, with this a new generation where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You know, all those can not knowing that liberty means being delivered from that kind of lifestyle. Being liberated from... <laughs> Then by the time her own is here, other people's own will be here. By the time she comes to church, her chest is open and the back is open. Other people will come with uh, bikinis and any other thing and say, no, that's the woman of God. See how she is. I am not a woman of God. I can be anyhow. Who is it that is following you? There are people, if people follow them, both them and the people will end in hell. The question is, if people follow you, where will they end? If people follow you, where will they end? If they follow your example, take your steps, and do the things you do, where will they end? Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. We have to run. Be a direction giver. Number six, number five. Be an excited, enthusiastic, exuberant personality. An excited, enthusiastic, exuberant personality. See? When you see somebody in the office, I'm sure you remember this kind of example, neatly suited, or maybe it's a lady, just all dressed up, decently dignity, laughing and smiling for everybody, and just everybody just ex excited and jubilating. Ah, you the shy, no? You are shiny, no? What happened? <laughs> Has somebody approached you recently? I can see you just shining and glowing. That was what the Bible said. John was a shining light and you were ready to rejoice in his light. Shining calls for rejoicing. Where, that was John chapter, of course, John chapter 5 verse 35 where we read, where there is shining, there is rejoicing. When the Jews could not be killed, the Bible said the Jews had light and joy. They had light. 
enthusiastic, optimistic, exuberant, positivistic, effervescent, boiling over, bubbling over. Don't be a depressive pastor. Depress, depressive. You will depress the congregation. No matter what, no matter what the matter is, ensure. Just, no matter what the matter is, ensure that you don't transfer gloominess on the people. Charles G. Finney said, preacher, if you are not excited about your preaching and your ministry, by all means, get out of the pulpit. Young people, elderly people, everybody, don't talk with depression. The things that are ready to make you happy are more than what wants to make you sad. Shine! Be, be up, up and doing. I make my wife laugh all the time. And it's a good thing because I have the gift of making people laugh. <laughs> and she has the gift of laughing to the, to the, to the proceed process. It was balanced. Otherwise, I could be very, very serious-minded. And if I, don't, I didn't have such a wife, they, you can see how the house would be smoking. Hey. <laughs> I take authority over gloominess. Whatever has caused your joy to die, today I command it to die. Let me add one word. Pastor's wife, please help your husband. People will listen to the pastor, but they monitor your countenance. If the pastor is lying that he is happy, the wife will betray it. She will, re she will reflect it. The wife will confirm Somebody lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. The woman looks and. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Will you lift your hands and shout yes? At the end of the day, some people may ask the pastor, it's all well with madam. Please, it is well. Help you. There are people who the pastor drove from the church. There are those madam drove. Not consciously, but attitudinally. Young lady who has not yet married. If you don't have the call to marry a pastor, don't, don't dare it. Pastor's wife have grace. And pastor's wife, the Lord bless all of you. Amen. And give you the grace to handle the pressures. If don't branch it by any means. Not by lack of husband to marry. The person who came is a, is a pastor. So, don't, don't dare it. Be a good Christian. Pray for the ministry. Somebody say amen. Did you hear what I just said? Anybody living here to shine? Yes, All right, take your seat. I give you six, right? Number six. Shine means to be a darkness dissipator. A darkness dissolver. A darkness dissipator. A darkness dissolver. The light shineth in darkness. John chapter 1 verse 5. And the darkness comprehended it not. Let the forces of darkness crumble where you manifest. Let 
the forces of hell bow at your sight. Let the powers of hell in the territory where you are know that you are there. Some um, bad people carried someone in, in their vehicle. A member of our church. I think in that instant day, her phone began to ring. And those devils were familiar with the tongues. Who is this witch? He's talking, say, my father in the Lord, Dr. Pastor Paul Nature. They look at each other and say, oh boss, bad market. Drop, 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 drop. <laughs> this is bad market. How, how won't it be bad? Everyone seated here today, may God make you a terror to the altars of your father's house. Everyone here tonight, may God send you to your country, your territory, your community as a terror to the powers of darkness there. And everybody here tonight, we agree together. The darkness forces of our nation, they shall bow to the authority of Jesus. Listen, take your seat. In the morning, I told you, Shh, arise was not an advice. It was a command. This same evening is the same thing. Uh, shine is not a command. It's not a, it's not a, a negotiation. Shine is an instruction, a command of power. Go and be outstanding. Go and release potential. Go and be a light bearer, a well of revelation. Go and be a direction giver. Go and be a darkness. Right. Go and be an excited person. Move in excitement and exuberance and effervescent. Go and be a darkness dissolver. Destroy the forces of darkness. Forts. Finally, if you give me 10 minutes, I'll be able to finalize and then we shall pray before we go. What is the secret of shining? One, it is called light. We'll look at that tonight and then we'll look at the other maybe tomorrow morning. For your light is come. In the morning we might look at the glory dimension, but your light is come. All we want to find out now is what are the sources of light that can make a man, a woman, to stand out? What are the sources of light that can make a person to be outstanding, to be able to release their potential? What are the sources of light that can make you a light bearer? What are the sources of light that can turn you to a direction giver? The sources of light that can make darkness around you to dissolve. The sources of light that can make you an excited, enthusiastic, optimistic, effervescent, exuberant person. What are the sources of light? Number one is the light of God's presence. The light of God's presence. Hang around God and you step out with the shine on your face, on your life. For with thee, Psalm 36 verse 9, is the fountain of life. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. Psalm 89 verse 15. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk in the light of your countenance. You cannot live with God and be unknown on it. There will be something about you that people cannot mistake. Camp with God. Camp in worship. Camp in communion. Camp in prayer. Camp in his presence. To make you outstanding. 
make you a light bearer. Make you release potentials. Make you give direction. The light of God's presence. Number two, the light of God's word. Psalm 119 verse 9. Where we shall a man, young man, cleanse his way by taking heed according to your word. Okay, 119 verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 119 verse 130. The entrance of thy word was giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8. He sent a word into Jacob. It lighted upon Israel. The level of word you carry determines the level of light you carry. And the level of light you carry determines the extent of your shining in your generation. So, we have the light of God's presence. Then, the light of God's word. Then, the light of lighted vessels. That is, human vessels who carry light can light you with their light. That was what John the Baptist did to the people of his generation. John 5.35, where we read, he was a burning and a shining light. And you were for a season rejoicing in his light. You were beneficiaries of his light. Oh, la, 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 la. Association must bring assimilation manner. Do you hear that? Ay, 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 ay. Who you hang with determines what hangs around you. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they acknowledged that they had been with the master. Acts chapter 4 verse 13. There are associations that shepherd. You see? There is something about association. If you sit under the impact of a man who carries a teaching mantle, for example, it sharpens the way you see scripture. Uh, ordinarily, your insight begins to change. Your depth begins to increase because there is a sharpening that happens. If you are under the mantle of an uh, exuberant, boiling, effervescent minister, it turns your refrigerator into an incubator. <laughs> All of a sudden, when this guy came here, he was very gentle. You can hardly even say a word. Just come and just. Now, if you give him one minute, you want to fly. Just one minute. Just, just it. My wife, she's permanently quarrelsome. Just give her a microphone. Quarrel, quarrel, quarrel. I tell her, you're always quarreling. Calm down. His own is worse, this man. You have changed now. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying here? It, the light of who you associate with affects your light. And God forbid that you connect with lightless people or people in the dark. It suffocates any light you carry. God forbid that the wrong hands should branch your head. Branch your head. I hang around very like my Papa Bishop Yedekwa is a well of his revelation. A well. Ocean. Every time you talk to him, he has something to say. Fresh, light, deep. Is God speaking to somebody here today? So, light from lighted vessels. That is a place of looking into scriptures, of, read, of listening to messages preached, ministers' conference tapes, and such messages. It lightens your life. 
you were there in the service, but there were things you didn't hear. How many of you have ever picked a CD and you listened to it, you were in that service, but there was something you heard in the CD that it appears like you didn't hear it while the service was on? Because even the time to write at times, there are times that certain things may come and you didn't hear. Light, the light of lighted vessels. Number four is the light of divine wisdom. Wisdom is doorway to shining. The light of divine wisdom. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 13. Bible said, Then I saw that wisdom excelled fully as far as light excelled darkness. So wisdom is light and foolishness is darkness. That is the equation from that scripture. Concerning Daniel, in Daniel chapter 5 verse 11, the Bible said, there is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of your father, there was light, there was understanding, there was wisdom in him, like the wisdom of the gods. It was found in Daniel. So, light, we are talking of the light of divine wisdom, the light of divine ideas, divine inspiration, innovation, creativity, inventiveness. This light, when it enters you by God's release, like it did to Solomon, you turn into a wonder. You become unusually outstanding. All of a sudden, people look at you and they don't know your mis the mystery behind you. This construction made me things in this place. Sometimes overnight I will see something. Yes, I'll come and tell the architect and then the structural engineer. We'll do this. We'll do that. I saw it overnight. There should be columns now inside this auditorium at the place where the galleries are. There should be pillars. I knocked them off by light. And I said, design it so that it can stand without any single column anywhere inside. Anywhere people sit, nothing should block their face. They say, we are going to calculate it. They calculated it. They say it might cost us double the cost of construction by virtue of reinforcements and by virtue of, um, of, of the strength of columns and by virtue of all this. I said, well, releasing the money is better than blocking the people. Let's go ahead. They did the design, confirmed it can stand, took it to professor of structural engineering, head of department of a university. Confirmed, confirmed. If you are ready to spend this much and pay for this kind of pillars and columns and so forth, no pillars. <laughs> oh no. Eh? Oh no, no, no. We better spend the money than block the people. Are you not enjoying how the place looks? Nothing blocks you. Even though sitting under the, the, the galleries there. Am I communicating at all? With Father in fire into my mentality. Fresh wisdom. Fresh light. Fresh insight. Fresh creativity. Let me begin to receive wisdom that will cause me to stand out and shine. That will make me a road pointer. A direction giver. In my generation. I am tired of doing usual and ordinary and normal things. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. amen. Take your seat. Have you received anything so far? We have that light. The light of divine wisdom. Number five is the light of righteousness. The light of righteousness. Psalm 17 verse 11. All right, let me, let me get it right. While we are looking for that, go to Psalm 112, verse 4. Unto the upright, 
there ariseth light in darkness. Unto the upright, there ariseth light in darkness. Proverbs 13, verse 9. The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Say a louder amen. amen. A loud most amen. amen. Psalm 37 verse 6. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. So righteousness clothes a person with light and that light makes the person to shine. Crookedness buries a man inside darkness. Crookedness. Fraudulent deals. Lies. Deception. Unclean lifestyle. Do you remember if Paul the Apostle said, be not partakers of the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So dark, the works of iniquity are called the works of darkness. That is why occultic people are workers of darkness. That is why iniquitous people are dwellers in darkness. It's not possible for this God of heaven to cause your light to shine in crookedness fraudulent lifestyle there are people whose potentials have disappeared greatness buried because of crooked living the money that is not yours don't take it don't live in falsehood it buries you in obscurity. Don't let those who are behind you overtake you because of crookedness. Am I communicating? Because I have seen it. I have seen it in my eyes. In ministry. Crooked, crooked operations. Insincere operations. Somebody raising an offering and is not going to do what he said he would do with the offering. He said, we need to buy a church generator. Raise the offering and then bought a, a, a personal car. Right? Everybody is waiting for the generator. No generator. And they see the guy with a brand new car next time. And he's just behaving. I knew of a, a minister. I, I heard that they have been... In, oh, this is not a minister's conference. Maybe I should not talk. He was raising build money for church building for almost 17 years. At the end, no building, no money. Building, Iba. <laughs> no, it's those people go behind very fast. Very, very fast. I was invited to that altar one day. I went out of respect that this person has been in ministry for years. Let me respect and go and preach. I carried the microphone to preach. I was as dry as ice fish in deep freezer. For where to sing, to worship, to do anything, for to feel the anointing of God, nothing, zero. I said, Lord, what is happening? He said to me, Who sent you? I'm telling you. He said, Did you pray before you came here? Did you ask whether you should be here? On the altar there. That kind of quick communication that Nehemiah had. I didn't know I would get such a reply. Lord, what is happening? I need your help. Who sent you? Did you ask me before you came here? 
I prayed. I said, I beg, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please have mercy on me. I won't come again. <laughs> the anointing came like a, a blanket. I ministered like a man from another world. An escape at the end. <laughs> I appreciated him in the hotel. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I have heard. Next time I will ask. Next year they invited me. I said, I'm sorry, sir. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Please just be clear, be open, be clean. I don't have one single church checkbook in my possession. I don't need it in my possession forever. They won't sign without asking me for it. I will direct. They will say this is what we want to do, all right? Audit it. Be clear that this, this is the amount and all that and check it. Thorough checks and checks and checks and checks. But I don't need it to sign overnight or in the morning. I say, oh, no, no. I like us to make up our minds and let them embrace the light from righteousness. And let me say, once you have the light of God's presence, the light of God's word, the light of lighted vessels, the light of divine wisdom, the light of righteousness, Add to it the light of joy. That will be number six. The light of joy. Already we saw how light, the people rejoiced in light in John 5, 35. Light will make you to rejoice and joy is tied to light. This we see in Esther chapter 8 verse 16. The Jews had light and that light was gladness, it was joy, it was honor. Make the choice for joy. Joy is not a gift, it's a choice. And it's a choice that you can make. Be happy, be optimistic, be enthusiastic. As long as there is life, there is possibility. Three prayers I'm going to pray tonight. And by the time I am through praying that prayers, those prayers, we are true tonight. Is there somebody here who is going to leave here back to your family, back to your place of work, back to your ministry, back to the church, back to your country, and back to your nation. With joy, with excitement shining, you will stand up on your feet with a loud shout of praise. <laughs> loud most shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You receive something, say amen. amen. Now, if you give me another 15, 10 minutes, the Bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning. And so I don't want any distraction movement. Nobody's moving now, and I don't want anybody to move until we are through. How many of you are going to move from here and deliberately shine? One of the greatest things I discover in that is that in life, you must be deliberate to succeed. You must be deliberate. <laughs> uh, you must be very, very deliberate. Don't do, don't allow, don't wait for chance to make things happen. You must be decisive. You must be deliberate. There are mountains you can't cross. There are realms you can never reach without a deliberateness. I will rejoice. I will rejoice in the God of my... Even if the fig tree does not blossom, I will rejoice. That is a deliberate decision. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will. 
I refuse to consult the field to determine my joy. I will rejoice. Must be deliberate. Trying to learn a skill. Be, de be deliberate. Nobody becomes a long distance runner by mistake. You've been trying to, to learn keyboard and learn this and learn that and you are just waiting for, for it to happen for you. Never. Somebody say amen. amen. Say it louder, amen. amen. Be, delib be deliberate, be deliberate. I will sing in the spirit and I will prophesy also. He said, I will. Smithrigus was stood one day on the road and he said, I am not living here until I receive the gift of tongues and interpretation. He received and interpreted. Then he started moving. <laughs> Those who wait for chance have no chance. Life does not have pity on those who have no choice. You get what you decide, not what you deserve. There are many people who deserve many things who don't get it. You are, you, you, you are decisive, decided, deliberate. Somebody said, if your ship does not meet you on the shore, swim and meet it. Amen. Anybody going to deliberately shine tonight? I will shine. Anybody ready to shine by decision? Lift up your hands now and begin to thank, tell, tell the Lord. First of all, thank him for the word you received. 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 All right. Lift your hands everywhere you are. Everywhere and say after me. Say, Father. Father. Say it louder. Father. Father. I have decided to shine. You said I should shine. And I shall shine. I shall be outstanding. I shall release my potentials. I shall be a light bearer. I shall be a direction giver. I shall be an excited person, enthusiastic, exuberant. I shall be a darkness destroyer, a darkness dissipator. Lift your voice and say, Father, I apply for the light of your presence, the light of your word, the light. From the light, say the light from the light of your anointed servants. I connect with the light of divine wisdom, the light of righteousness. I connect it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord, with the light of joy. I connect that light. I connect it now in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and speak to God. Open your mouth and speak to God.